Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at what is probably the most difficult aspect of these inequalities. We're going to look at how to solve quadratic inequalities in one variable, and we're also going to take a look at our graphical and our algebraic methods for doing this. So, to start, if I have the graph of the equation, y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 21, which we can see down here, then what are the x-intercepts? Well, I have one that's here, and I have one that is over here. They are at negative 7 and positive 3. For what values of x is the graph below the x-axis? Well, if I take a look at where it's below the x-axis, it's going to be everything down in the region here, which means that it's, when it's between the two intercepts. And I can state that that is going to be negative 7 is less than x, which is less than 3. When is it above the x-axis? Well, it's above the x-axis when it's to the left of the lower one or when it's to the right of the bigger one. So I can say that that is going to be in two regions. One when x is less than negative 7 and one when x is greater than 3. If I'm using the graph to solve the following equations on a number line, well, in the first case, it says if x squared plus 4x minus 21 is less than 0. That's where we did the first one, where it's in between those two intercepts. And how I would represent that is I'm going to say, here's my number line. I have the lower point is negative 7. I have the bigger point is positive 3. Because it does not include an equal sign, it's just less than, I'm going to use the open circles. And I know it's going to be when it's between those two things is when the graph is dropped below 0. When I get to the second one, if I have x squared plus 4x minus 21 is greater than or equal to 0, then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw my number line. I'm going to show my two intercepts, negative 7 and positive 3. Because this one does include an equal sign, I'm going to do solid dots to say yes, it can include that point. And when it's above the x-axis, it was when it was to the left of negative 7 or to the right of 3. The weirdest one is going to be this cannot equal 0. That means that it can be any point that's positive, any point that's negative. It just can't actually be on 0. How do I represent that? Well, I'm going to draw my number line. I'm going to have the negative 7 and positive 3. And then, because it can't actually equal 0, at the points where it would equal 0, or at the intercepts, I'm going to draw my open circle, and say it can be anything to the left of here, anything in between, or anything to the right of here. It just can't equal those exact points. All right. So, if we notice that there's only one variable in the inequality to solve for, so the solution should always be in terms of just x. Even though we're representing it graphically, we're only going to consider just the x part, and that's why we only shade in along the line to show what it is going to be. We don't shade in two dimensions like we were doing for the last lesson, because our equation doesn't actually have a y, we're just artificially creating that. So, if I'm going to use the graphing method, the first thing is I'm going to rearrange the inequality so that the zero is on the right-hand side. If it's not already like that, well, this one already is. If I find the roots on the calculator, then that means I'm actually just going to go ahead and graph it out, and I'm either going to use the roots function or the zeros function on the calculator, and I'm going to sketch it and determine what values for x this is actually true and write my solution. So it won't shade along the line, but you can solve that for yourself. In this case, I'm going to graph the equation y is equal to x squared minus 10x plus 16 into my calculator. I don't need to change my window settings, so I'm going to leave it at my standard window settings, negative 10, positive 10, and 1, and negative 10, positive 10, and 1. Then, when I graph it out, I should see a graph that looks something like this. 
It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be reasonably accurate. And I see that I have these two intercepts. One is going to be at 2 and 0, and one is going to be at 8 and 0. When it says it is below 0, or the graph is below 0, that means all the y values when that is below 0. And I know that when it's below 0, it's going to be down here. So if I'm stating what my solution is, well, if my solution is when it's in that range below there, and I do include the equal sign, as I can see on here, then I'm going to state that my final solution is going to be 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. There's my solution. Okay. My first algebraic method, and I'm going to show you three different ways to do this algebraically. The first one is called roots and test points. If I'm doing roots and test points, the nice thing is for any of my algebraic methods, the first step is I need to find what my x-intercepts are if the equation was equal to zero. That's always going to be my breaking point because that's where it's going to shift graphically from above the x-axis to below the x-axis or vice versa. So if I'm considering the roots of x squared plus 2x minus 24, then I'm going to either use factoring or quadratic formula to solve this. I don't care what method you use as long as you're going through and getting the correct intercepts. So in this case, I know that the x-intercepts are going to be at negative 6 and positive 4. I'm going to use the interval to say that, well, either it's going to be less than or equal to, because in my original inequality it had less than or equal to, negative 6. So it's when it's to the left of the lower intercept. The next region is when it is above the lower one, but less than the bigger one. So it's when it's between those two points. And the last case is going to be when it is bigger than the larger intercept. When it says test point, it just means pick a number you're going to substitute in for x that fits into the region. Now you can't use the actual point, so if it says x is less than or equal to negative 6, you can't use negative 6. You have to pick a point that is less than that, because if I use negative 6 for this one, then that's also proving true in this one, because in here you can see that it also says that negative 6 is a possibility. So let's spread it out. It doesn't matter what numbers you pick. Usually I like to go with 5, 10s, or 1s, just because I find it simpler. So in this case, I'm going to use negative 10. When I substitute it, you have to substitute it into the original inequality as it originally existed. This is because if you're moving things around, you might forget a negative, and that's going to change the possibilities that exist. So make sure it's always with the original inequality. And I'm going to say that if I have negative 10 squared plus 2 times negative 10 minus 24, it has to be less than or equal to 0. Negative 10 squared is going to give me 100. 2 times negative 10 is going to give me negative 20. And then minus 24 has to be less than or equal to 0. 100 minus 20 is going to be 80 minus another 24, and I'm going to get 56 is less than or equal to 0. And then I'm going to state that that is false. 56 is not actually less than or equal to 0. For the second one, I'm going to use the easiest point I can if it's ever a possibility. I'm going to say that x is 0. So then I can state that 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 24 is less than or equal to 0. Well, 0 squared is just 0. 2 times 0 is just 0. So it's just negative 24 is less than or equal to 0. That is true. 
And for the last one, I'm going to use positive 10. And I'm going to state that if I have 10 squared plus 2 times 10 minus 24 is less than or equal to 0, then I'm going to have 100 plus 20 minus 24 is less than or equal to 0, 96 is less than or equal to 0. This is also false. The solution is always going to be where it proves true which means that my solution is going to be negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. That is the only region where this is actually accurate. All right, when we go to sign analysis, sign analysis is similar to the uh, roots and test point. It's just going to be using, just looking at, are my results positive or negative? So let's take a look at what this looks like. The first thing is, to use sign analysis, I can only do it if it is factorable. In this case, it is factorable because when I take this inequality, I can factor it down to x plus 6 times x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. That means that my two intercepts are going to be at negative 6 and positive 4, which we already knew from the last example. Then I'm going to split it up. I'm going to make this little chart where I'm going to start by stating, well, what are the regions? One is going to be if it's to the left of negative 6, if it's between negative 6 and 4, and then if it's above 4, which looks pretty similar to the chart that we had up on the top. Then I'm going to put my two factors on the side and say one factor was x plus 6, and the other factor was x minus 4. When I'm looking at the regions, so if I'm looking at the region in here, then that means I just need to pick a number to substitute in that is less than negative 6, kind of like what we had up on the top there. So I'm going to pick a number in that region, and the number I'm going to pick is once again going to be negative 10. When I pick a number for the next region, I'm going to say that's going to be 0, and when I pick a number for the top region, I'm going to use positive 10. Now, I'm not substituting into my entire inequality, I'm substituting into just my factors. So if I substitute negative 10 into the first one, if I said negative 10 plus 6, then negative 10 plus 6 is going to give me negative 4. It's going to give me a negative number. If I said 0 plus 6, it's going to give me positive 6. That's a positive number. And 10 plus 6 is going to be 16. That's also going to be positive. When I do the same thing for the next factor, I'm going to say negative 10 minus 4 is going to give me negative 14, so it's negative. 0 minus 4 is going to give me negative 4, so that is also negative. And 10 minus 4 is going to give me 6. This one's going to be positive. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to vertically multiply these things to say what it's going to be for the entire function on the bottom. So if I had a negative plus a negative, or sorry, negative times a negative, it's going to give me a positive. A positive times a negative for the second set is going to give me a negative, and a positive times a positive is going to give me a positive. Because my original inequality said that it wanted it less than zero, then I'm looking for when it's in the negative region, which is going to be in here. So I'm going to state that my final answer is going to be in that middle negative region, negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4.